Today I'm going to show you how to add your uh, iPad to a Mac or a PC. So if the teacher is teaching in the front of the classroom, you want your low vision or blind student to be able to access the same information. So let's go ahead and go into the internet. Menu, search box, edit, Mozilla, enter, leave it menus. And I'm going to use Mozilla, Mozilla uh, right up to the address bar with Control L. L. And I'm going to type in avatron.com. A V A T R O N Avatron C O N slash A T P S slash A I R com slash X slash A D I S P L A Y. Avatron uh, dot com slash app slash air dash display. Once you get to your page, you're going to do insert F7 for your links. And you're going to go ahead and go uh, down to all your different options. So if you want a Mac, there, there you have it. And you can do all the different combinations, Mac, PC, PC to Mac, 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 uh, uh, Mac to iTools. But I want to download Air Display to connect for my Windows, so I'm going to enter on that. And with Mozilla, I get an additional download air box. And here's my setup. I'm going to save my file. Firefox, 36%. So I'm going to go ahead and down arrow, and then I'm going to hit my Applications key, select list box, add applications, context menu, and, and I'm going to open it, open, o. and enter. enter. Open security warning dialog. Now I'm going to go ahead and run it with an Alt R. Select setup language. Select the language to use. And I do want English, so I'm going to tap English English to OK. OK button to activate space. And space bar. Now I'm just going to follow the wizard. So Alt N for next. Alt A to accept it. Alt N for next. And it installs. So I'm just going to do Alt I to install. Cancel button. Download air display software for Windows dash Mozilla Firefox. Tells me I have to restart my system in order to configure this. Okay, so I've restarted my computer uh, to con to finish the configurations of air display. And visually, if I take you down to my system tray, and I'm going to hit my control key so you can actually see this, you see air display with these two little monitors down here. I'll take you down there with JAWS also, so insert F11 as it is in your system tray. And air display is your first one. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter on air display. You can also double click on that. Now, if you've named your uh, iPad, it will come up on there. But here's a really easy, fast way to get it moving. Is just go to Other, and you're going to type in the IP address. So I've gone over to my iPad to get my IP address off of that. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my IP address. And you need to go through the same process of setting up your iPad, and that is an app, uh, which costs $9.99, so you will have to download the app onto your iPad. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and say OK on that, and then it's going to connect. So now I'm going to go over to my iPad, and I will uh, do a video off of this so you can also see it taken from the iPad. So I'm now over on my iPad. I've downloaded my Air Display from the App Store, and now I'm going to connect to the teacher's computer. Now I can connect my external keyboard and my Braille Display to the iPad, um, but this time I actually have the uh, Braille Display connected to the teacher's uh, because VoiceOver will not work in uh, Air Display. So this allows for low vision kids to see what's going on with air display and then it allows the blind children to actually read everything that's on the teacher's computer. So I'm going to go ahead and go into air display and click PC and if you're looking for your IP address it's right there with I, um, air display and then I'm going to go back over to my computer and I click OK and connect so now I am actually seeing the teacher's computer uh, so if the teacher is bringing up videos or anything, it will be displayed on the iPad. So let's go ahead and just do a really simple little lesson so you get the idea of how to use this. And I want to increase the viewing range here. So I can go ahead and begin typing. And enter. And then I can uh, bring up 
the keyboard. Now, the way the, the low vision student's going to bring up the keyboard is it's down there, and then you can go to the external keyboard, and they'll hit it, and they can add more information and decrease the keyboard so they can actually see what's going on that way. And the blind student, of course, is following all this along on the Braille display. So let's say the teacher actually wants to do a problem. Now the blind student's going to go over and they're going to read it and then they're going to answer. And they can go ahead and hit enter. And they can also say... So they can actually input information from their Braille display also. So let's let the teacher do another problem. And then the, uh, let's say the lone vision student's going to answer and they just go to their external keyboard and they answer. Now, uh, the, let's say the child wants to do the problem. They can do this also. Now the blind student is reading this on their Braille display and they can actually answer also. So you can have the blind students interacting, the low vision students interacting uh, with the teacher. So this is just a nice little way to um, go about and do your business. The teacher, of course, guides and directs everything and uh, the low vision and blind students can join in.